So I know that I had some negative opinions last week, and maybe that not would have been so popular about episode two. But this week, I'm sorry. The third episode in a row where we've seen somebody infiltrate the other kind of castle um, so easily and get in contact with one of the royal heirs or royal people of the, you know, of the opposite side. This time, obviously, being Rhaenyra getting into King's Landing and, and spending time with Alice and trying to convince her to stop this war and really explaining what, you know, Viserys said to her last season. And while I will say the scene between Emma Darcy and Olivia Cook, Alice and Rhaenyra was very well done, what are we doing? We're, we're, we're like having this grand circle around and talking about war when it seems like no shit... People can go in and out of each other's castles every episode and put somebody else in harm's way. Whether it would have been Rhaenyra killing Alice in there, whether it would have been Alice in just capturing Rhaenyra and getting her in there. Like, there's no defending it. It's stupid. It's stupid bad writing. It's just bad. And a lot of this episode I thought just had very meandering bad writing all around. We do get introduced to Alicent's brother, which... Clearly, he's going to be kind of a person who's against Sir Christian Cole. We'll see where that leads down the line. But that was kind of a, a new branching storyline. We did get, I think, an excellent opening of the episode, which I think could have been its own standalone episode if they wanted to be something more artistic and go into exactly what happened with um, two rival the Bracken and the Blackwoods. That, you know, having to dispute one side is Team Green, one side is Team Black. It would have been cool to have a whole, like, standalone episode that led to that battle. We saw that battle as, like, the first quote-unquote battle of the war. But instead, we come back after the credits to see that they've been fighting and there's been bloodshed that had happened. Which, again, very cool, good, cold, cold opening. But I left myself after this episode wondering... Why couldn't that story be this full episode? Because we didn't get much else. There was a bit with Damon kind of, you know, dealing with the demons of his past. We got a cool little, you know, Easter egg glimpse of Millie Atcock coming back um, as young Rhaenyra and a vision for him, kind of lacing up uh, Jaceris's neck, who, you know, we just saw he, got, he kill, you know, ordered the kill of Aemon, but eventually became, you know, the young uh, prince. But the few things I did like, obviously, I, I've been enjoying everything with, with her niece this season. Um, I wish there was more of her in Corliss. They only get like three minutes of screen time and it doesn't feel like it's used well enough. But it was used. And the scene with Allison and um, Rhaenyra at the end. But again, when you look at the logic of that scene, it doesn't make much sense at all. I thought the acting from Emma Darcy outside that scene was kind of stale and poor in other places, um, especially with Reyna. It felt like there was kind of reading of lines and not much else. And I really didn't enjoy or like the side plot with Aegon and these new knights, per se, these new dim-witted knights that felt more like comedy figures than, you know, anything interesting character-wise. We did get a drop of somebody being a bastard of uh, Daemon Targaryen, it seems, so... We'll see if that person rises up. Clearly, I think there's a lot of bastards they're showing this season, but they're kind of hiding it until bigger reveals down the line, in my opinion. But, yeah, we got that kind of reveal. And then we got a confrontation between Aegon and Aemon with Aemon, you know, the person that, you know, took Aemon's virginity and his kind of frail, fragile state in there, but also very confident and stuff. He's really only you know, frail, frail and, and vulnerable around her. But when others are around, he has no problem standing up for himself and being that character he is. Um, Quotes-wise, I did like, you know, Renice pushing back on Rhaenyra of being like, it's the, you know, they're the ones who started this fight. And she's like, well, maybe it started with, you know, Luke taking Aemon's eye, you know, pointing back to this feud kind of starting way in the past here and kind of boiling up this way. Um, as far as the scene with Alice and Rhaenyra, I agree with Alicent. There is no turning back now. Sadly, Otto, Otto has been disbanded. Cole and others are marching their army. And a Aegon is, is dead set because his son died on, on battling this war. And if Rhaenyra isn't willing to step down, neither is going to be Aegon. So we're going to have this war no matter what. And, you know, Aemon is ready to fight. So much is going on here. You know, Damon's ready to fight. And even still through this episode, you see the stubbornness and the, 
you know, she's growing a bit, but the stubbornness and selfishness of Rhaenyra, you know, even fighting Renisa at first, and even not understanding that, like, hey, you don't want all these people to die. Well, why is it that you have to be... Why is it that Alice has to be the one that tries to step in and stop this? She's the head of the other army. She could step down herself. She has the actual power where Alice does not. Rhaenyra, again, is me, 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 me. It's not really about trying to save people. Going to say that out there. I mean, I'm not saying she's going to have that at heart, but she is the person out of the two that has the most power to stop this. And she's choosing not to because in her mind, she still deserves that throne. Which, again, leads me down to the, like, she's not the best leader for the realm. It doesn't have the realm's best interest in mind. She has her own best interest in mind. But, yeah, this episode was meandering. There wasn't too much going on. And that's not necessarily to say I don't like this episode. I think if there was good character moments and good writing and you were building out characters, that would work. But it felt like we're just going through the motion, scene to scene to scene to scene, and nothing real impactful kind of happens or growths. At the end of the day, we're still in the same spot I thought we were last week, and not much has went out besides being shown once again that it's really easy to get to these, you know, royals without any type of fuss or stopping. And if you want to kill them, y you can easily kill them if you think hard enough. But yeah, that's my kind of harsh review of episode three of House of the Dragon. But I'm sorry, I mean... This is this is this is a weak storytelling show, and usually the acting is superb, and in, in parts the acting was superb here, but the writing and even some of the acting in this episode was pretty lackluster. And we're almost halfway through this season, so we'll see where episode four goes. But I'll wait for you next week and put your comments down below. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong in terms of your thoughts, but everybody's allowed to have their own opinion, and that's the great thing about TV and movies is it's all subjective. So. If you love this episode, tell me down below and I'm going to be happy for you. But for me, this was pretty bad. It was pretty bad.